Okay, hello everyone. My name is Roy Sakaki, founder of Open Mails. And I'm Takashi Koyama. Thank you for being here. <laughs> okay, today we'd like to talk about a project we've been working on a few years that may change the future of food industry. It's a project called Open Mails. In short, the project aims to digitize, transmit, and reproduce all kinds of food and create a digital food revolution. Sounds crazy already, right? <laughs> okay, then let's start with, with this video. This is one of the projects by Open Mills called Sushi Teleportation. Here is a nice sushi restaurant in Tokyo. What do you think? <laughs> it's innovative, right? Of course, the project is still work in progress. But we have many engineers and researchers involved, and we are in the process of R&D. Our idea is, first, the correct food data and break it down to taste, shape, texture, and nutrition. Then, accumulate the data in our database called Foodbase. Next, the data from Foodbase is transmitted to a 3D food printer. Finally, two food is printed out by the printer to be enjoyed anywhere, like outer space. It all started with this inspiration I had four years ago. My career background is art director I used to make poster and printers. So, do you know what these letters are? These letters stand for the color model for printing, CM, Mazenda, yellow, black. When I was working on graphic design, I used to work with this every day. Anything pretty is made up of CMYK dots. If you design something using CMYK right now, and sent it to printing company all over the world, then we'll be able to print the exact same piece of design. I thought, could this be an apply for food? This was the moment of my inspiration. And then I came up with a CMYK for food, SSSB, meaning salty, sweet, sour, and bitter. I thought it was a very interesting idea. So I made this proposal to our boss, and he gave me a tiny R&D budget for the project. First, I bought a color printer. Instead of ink, I put soy sauce, sugared water, vinegar, and sake in the cartridges. <laughs> and printed image on edible paper made from soybeans and starch. I actually used graphic design software to adjust the CMYK balance and try to eat it. It's tasted bad. <laughs> <laughs> but when you change the design, it tastes different. So I thought, wow, you really might be able to send taste to printer. I then searched for scientists who are working on transferring the taste into data and I found a well-known professor. He, he said to me, you are crazy, but I like the idea. <laughs> After having many discussed with him and other scientists, I came, I came up with another idea. This idea was, if you put together many edible seeds printed for data into a 3D shape, then you might end up with a meal you can actually eat. And then, 
I found Professor Furukawa, who was working on edible material using 3D printing techniques. He too said, you're crazy, <laughs> but I like the idea. <laughs> and the project kept evolving like this. We got all these specialists involved, and the project expanded with speed. Okay. So for the next step, um, we wanted to share our idea to the world, raise awareness, and invest, uh, invite support for the project. So we announced this project called Sushi Teleportation. Uh, he showed the video earlier. And uh, we had a showcase at South by Southwest last year. And this is a Sushi Teleportation exhibit. Uh, we did a demo teleporting sushi from Tokyo to Texas, USA. And here's a close-up. Uh, the sushi counter looks just like a typical Japanese restaurant, but instead of a human chef, uh, the robotic arm sits at the back of the counter and creates the data sushi. We call this a, a pixel food printer. Uh, we break down a meal into small cubes of data, just like a low-res image. And every pixel can have a different taste and texture in theory. And by accumulating these tiny pixels, uh, we would be able to print out food with complex textures. And to achieve this, uh, we are using ingredients taken from rice and fish to create the basic gel. And it's important for us that we can recreate complex textures within minimum ingredients. And this is how the sushi is printed. Uh, the white part is rice, green is wasabi, on top the shrimp. And to make one piece, it takes about half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and one sushi meal is normally like 10 pieces, uh, so it will take about five hours <laughs> to complete a meal. Uh, it wasn't a practical yet, but uh, I hope we will get there. And our exhibit at South By was very popular. And with the success, uh, we gained many people who wanted to help. And there are, these are the core members of our team right now. And we all have different backgrounds. Then we launched the next project called Dot Cube. Uh, Dot Cube is a standard format for digital food. To send food digitally, uh, you need a data format. We are all familiar with PDFs and JPEGs, aren't we? And Dot Cube is a file format for digital food. Uh, this is what the UI looks like. Uh, we created a uh, basic format of a three centimeter cube constructed by layers. And there are nine elements that you can change. Uh, for example, taste, temperature, texture, uh, nutrient. And it works like Photoshop or Illustrator. And then uh, we would create an online platform uh, where you can share your cubes with other people around the world. Cube designers can upload their original ones. And there's also a page with recommendation and the day of the rankings. So users can download the cubes and print them with this special food printer. Uh, we just completed the prototype and have applied for, a, for the patent in Japan. And in the future, uh, we hope Open Meals uh, will become a platform uh, that connects people who design foods and people who consume them. And our goal is to create a world of connected food here. So back to you, Rio. Roy. OK, and up next, this is our most recent and the biggest project so far. It's a hyper future restaurant called Sushi Singularity Tokyo. The concept of the restaurant is food singularity begins when all food is digitalized and it is connected on the internet. We predict that two things happen. First, the first one is food will be connected to people all around the world. With Dot Cube, you will be able to make food online, edit it, and share it. We predict that an enormous amount of new food will emerge globally. Until today, the same food would be shared by only a handful of people, like a mother cooking with your family, or a chef cooking with a restaurant's guest. But in a world of digitalized food, 
you can share your food like you share your photos today. We believe a whole new culinary culture will be born. The second one is that food will be connected to the human body data. With the progress of healthcare technology, a huge amount of data regarding your body can be collected, such as DNA, bacteria flora, and your nutritional conditions. By connecting this data with food data, you can create for that perfectly matches what your body needs. Open Meals is planning to open a hyper-future restaurant where you can experience these two things. The restaurant is, as I said, called Sushi Singularity Tokyo. As the logo design embodies the shape of the DNA spiral pattern in the format of the traditional Japanese family emblem. And this is what the restaurant will look like. At the back, there's a various food fabrication machines. There are different types of 3D food printers. In addition, there are robotic arms, a plant factory, and a fish cell culture incubator, and more. And in collaboration with a traditional sushi chef, this CGI is not based on just my imagination, but it is also based on the real result of research with specialists. So, can I ask, do you want to visit the restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> Let me explain. How you visit the restaurant? First, you make a reservation online. Second, you will receive health test kit. After you test, you will be issued a health ID. And the special device in the kitchen will analyze the ID, and the sushi will be already personalized. This is how you experience it. So here is a high-end looking sushi restaurant in Tokyo. With face recognition technology, the customer's health data is sent to the kitchen. The perfect nutrients are selected. A recommendation menu appears. machine and the human chef works together to provide sushi you have never seen and eaten before. planning to open the pop-up restaurant in Tokyo in 2020. So far, <laughs> right? Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Here's a concept menu for the Singularity Sushi. We use a variety of approach to create these sushi, such as biotechnology, chemistry, and the structural studies. This is sushi that cannot be created by the human hand. Here's a some example. This is a cell culture tuna. We printed the internal structure with a 3D food printer and cultured the cell around it to make the artificial tuna. 
We are still in the R&D phase, but we are working with cell venture meat, a uh, cell-based meat venture, to make it possible. Now, this is negative stiffness honeycomb octopus sushi. <laughs> when you bite it, as it shrinks, bouncy back, and repeat, it moves in your mouth, which should be a whole new food experience. This is a sushi with dashi soup inside. For covering the soup, we use a film that is made from the chemical reaction of arginate sodium and calcium fluid. Inside, there are 3D printed fish bowl and golden flakes floating. So beautiful. In March, we went to South by again and showcased our demo machine, the experience, uh, exam explained the concept of the restaurant. We demonstrated part of the function of Sushi Shinjiraji restaurant to match the restaurant's design image as it was shiny, gorgeous, and quite crazy machine. It became one of the most popular booths at the event. Please watch the video. More than 50,000 people visit the exhibit over the four days. The project was introduced on media around the world, and we still receive many requests today. But more importantly, the news of the project spread, and we are now connected to many business partners. They come from industries such as food, manufacturing, IT, medical, etc. With the help of all these people and industries, we are actually coming across to uh, create a new market. Okay, that's all the project details. Pretty crazy, right? <laughs> okay, first. So in the final chapter, I'd like to share our learnings from the project and how to actually create the future. Uh, we created this method called vision-oriented method. Uh, it's not a problem-solving approach, rather it's the opposite way. Uh, let me explain. Until now, uh, new products or services were born by developing on business seed over a long period of time, usually within one company. But for open meals, the process is totally different. Uh, first, you think of a future you'd like to see happening based on business or technology seeds. Think of a crazy future, create a hyper future vision. And at this point, don't worry about being unrealistic and fully use your brains to come up with crazy ideas. Then uh, you do the research, talk to the experts, sharpen the concept, uh, visualize your goal image to the detail, and make a prototype. And the realistic image is very important here. Then you show the world your visuals and spread the word. Uh, the graphic images help people around the world instantly understand your idea. For open meals, we chose South by as a place to start. Then, if you succeed in gaining a lot of attention, the talent and the technology you need will come to you. Because the, your vision is so futuristic, they will come from all sorts of expertise. And with your new team of people from different industries, uh, you set the goals and work on R&D. And then, with players from this 
different industries collaborating, uh, you will have the chance of creating an innovative product, service, or even a whole new industry. And this is a path we've been through. I believe there are uh, people with great talent and passion in this room here today. So let's create the future together. Thank you very much.